Good afternoon, everyone. And for anyone in the public who was listening, you can see I'm hosting or hostessing for the first time. Um, I usually have technical support. This is the July 1st um, meeting of the Elementary School Building Committee. And I see we're, we are still waiting for Margaret Wood to join us, but per the governor's order, and actually this is chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. Um, we are continued to, we're continuing to meet by Zoom and the agenda for the meeting lists how the public can join us and public comments at the end of the meeting. To start the meeting um, and declare a quorum, I need to make sure that everyone can hear and be heard. So I am just gonna call out names as I see them on the screen and just indicate that you're here and can be heard. Anthony? Here. Jonathan? Here. Sean? Here, sorry. Rupert? I'm here. Ben? Also here. Allison? Here. Mike? Here. Paul? Present. Dwayne? Present. Steve? Here. And uh, Margaret Wood is joining us. And Margaret, I just want to make sure you can hear and be heard. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. So to, today's agenda, as I think everyone knows, is a pretty, we have a two, two part agenda. The first is the one we have to get through this meeting. The MSBA has sent us back um, edited edits on the draft we sent to them and their instructions to us were literally accept the edits um, as one of the first guidelines. <laughs> and they were, they were fairly minor when they were pure edits. And then they had a few comments and questions. And Margaret has gone ahead and uh, done some of that, I think. Um, yes. I, it's that she's prepared to sh show to us. And that I think, Margaret, I'll let you walk us through where there were some places we had to make decisions and yeah. and also to talk about any things you did in response to their um, requested edits of us. Um, if Absolutely. That's, and then everyone can chime in if they saw something or don't agree, because the goal is to get to final and then we will vote on what we see in front of us before we turn to the other agenda item, which is Mike is gonna lead us through quickly the school committee's uh, timeline for making a decision about the sixth grade. So Margaret, if you want to share your screen, I think it's set up so that you can um, be the person sharing screen. Okay. And I, I wanna just say, um, honestly, their comments were extremely minor in my opinion. Um, Mike is nodding vigorously. <laughs> so yeah. that's a good sign. Before, what you come to expect is a lot, frankly, a lot more commentary than what we got on this one, which kudos to you, Margaret, and the committee for sending a document that uh, didn't require much in the way of extensive, extensive uh, edits or revisions. So thank yeah. you for your work, Margaret. Well, and let's give credit where credit is due because pretty much everything I did in this was cribbed from what you did for the OPM. So, <laughs> okay. So can everybody see this document? I'm gonna enlarge it a bit. Yeah. Especially, I see Steve's in his car. So <laughs> everybody, can everybody see that well enough? Yeah, you should just, anyone should shout out if they can't and otherwise we'll assume the okay. answer is yes. Okay. All righty. So again, the comments were minor. Um, I'm going to just go through. I have the set so that um, it's really showing simple markup, not all the markup, just to clarify. And again, um, what I did here when I sent the original draft out was I highlighted in yellow the stuff that we put in. So if it's not highlighted in yellow. It's their boilerplate. Okay, so we're not gonna spend time looking at their boilerplate. I'm happy to answer questions about the process, but the point of this exercise is to um, just go through their my fairly minor comments and then to get it off to them. The good news is, as I, I wanna relay, is that we are officially in the queue. We did make the cut, 
for the September 15th review of designer applications. So we're sort of officially on the timeline now. Um, and when we get to the end, I'll summarize that a little bit. But so first immediate step is to get this into them, gets out, then it gets advertised and then we're, then we're rolling. So, okay, so no, no changes here at the top. Um, I believe we discussed this issue, which was the value, construction value that I'm showing um, at the last meeting. So this was as submitted, but just to reconfirm, what I did was basically take Sean's very detailed thinking and I took out 20% to get to construction cost. Now that's a very kind of, um, I shouldn't say crude, simple way of doing it, but it reflects the fact that um, the MSBA has a cap on reimbursing on soft costs. So it's tied to that way of thinking. I thought Sean, what Sean did for the OPM application was very thoughtful and detailed. And, and I think conservative in the sense that it gives us quite a wide range in terms of where this could add up. So the first comment that they had was they, um, they asked us to correct these numbers, which had inadvertently gotten reversed. So just to confirm, these, these values for MBE and WBE, minority and women business enterprise participation, which are goals for the designer, are as they are for all, the, the town has some flexibility about using different numbers, but what we decided to do was to use the, the state, the current state standard, which is the DCAM standard, which is 6.6% .6 for MBE and 15% for WBE. And I just want to say uh, uh, the, the reverse was not completely by error. Our, we have a responsible employer bylaw, but in reading it, it refers specifically to construction. Construction, not yeah. To design. And so, and, and the state has two different, and I confirm with people who helped draft that bylaw that it was not meant to apply to design. So we are in compliance with our own bylaw. I didn't want to be out yeah. of compliance with it. Yeah, exactly. So um, the this is all as it was can reviewed. We, um, at the, sorry, following, um, can we go back? I'm so sorry to do this. And I know we're limited nope. for time. I think the population of Amherst is now just over 40,000 rather than just under. We were told it's going to be 41,000. So if we just around, maybe we should just say Change around 40,000. Right. It, we were told that the preliminary census shows around 41,000. Yep. There you go. Done. Okay. Excellent. Um, so again, this was all this content I'm skimming was Martin, reviewed. Could you, could you go up just a little bit? Cause there was a sure. comment here that we needed to, to fix and did you fix it already? Yes. So it was just, um, the, yeah, the documents did. referred to the 70s in one place, yeah. and then he, and then was very specific here yeah, that good. Wildwood was built in 1970 and Four River is built in 1973. So again, I'm using your text, but I assume that's correct. Yeah. Okay, um, thanks for catching that. So um, I want to say, because this was the part that we really worked on, I am very proud of the whole team. They had no comments on our objectives, none. <laughs> so that, that was good. Well done team, not a single comment. So I do have a question. I have a question on um, under workforce diversity and wage compliance, this responsible employer bylaw, our bylaw is for construction. Should we add the word for construction just before page 109? Um, so if they happen to click on that, they don't say those are different numbers? I think we should, I think that's helpful. I don't, I mean, I just don't wanna send them off on a tangent. So yeah. it is an objective and it will continue. Um, I think it's good to get this stuff here, but let's, the clarification will be helpful. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is boilerplate. Um, this, I think, yeah, this was where there was some duplication because I hadn't deleted something. Now, Margaret, I they asked us to cross compare this whole section, which is a repeat, and I did, and we captured everything above. Yeah. So you can you can delete it when you figure out what part of it was the repeat. 
Yeah, I did delete it from the from this it, version. So, but it's it looks like it's still here. Oh, um, you know what? I it's probably because in the version I sent you, I haven't accepted the the edits. Okay. So w this is what you would see if you accepted those edits. And I, I will do that just so there's no confusion before I send it to them. Okay, I'm just seeing because you said it, this was a markup. If all of all this text, a key issue, that's a repeat of what's up above. Is what I'm saying. It's a repeat. Somehow that repeat kept. You'll find. Yep, you're right. Okay, let me um, let me take a look at that after we get off the call. Okay, I can work with you. I and it was somehow the box you done stayed in rather than deleted, and we'd moved it all out. So there, yeah. sure I said this is almost verbatim. So yeah. okay, um, thought okay. I had deleted the box, but I guess not. So here on project schedule, there were a couple of minor edits. Um, Carl Brown noted that um, the I had had a fairly brief duration between what will probably be a summer 2022 um, approval of the MSBA board of the schematic re design report. And then the scope and budget approval actually would not happen until after the vote. So um, it's a minimum of four months. So I have plugged in the minimum here. Um, they also, as, as a point of record, always incorporate when your agreement expires. So this date that I'm highlighting was actually updated by the project, the MSBA project manager. So that's in May of 2024. Um, that feasibility, what that means is that if you haven't got a project with an approved local appropriation by that date, you have to negotiate for an extension or you get kicked out of the program. So that's, that's what that is, is a milestone. Um, no other changes here. Although this looks a little weird. Um, Margaret, can I just ask a quick question? Sure. On the, the, two, um, the two items that have November um, milestone dates, do we need one first in order to do the second one? Well, like, do we need so, the MSBA part first in order so to then? You, so you don't. The local yeah. vote can take place. Actually, interestingly, the local vote can even take place before this. Okay. Conceptually. Um, in general, I think you. this is better, which because you get to say to the community, the MSBA board has approved it. Um, I mean, I think in reality, what would happen is and I'm sort of stuck with the sequence um, uh, because this is what they give us. I think you would have this local vote um, November 8th, and then they would probably have the subsequent. But the truth is I can't see, and they don't know yet because they haven't published the dates for the MSBA board meetings. Okay. So, I mean, what I could do was I could change this to December and maybe that makes a little more sense to people. Um, as Carl says, you know, basically it would be a minimum of, it's a minimum of four months, but you know, it could be longer based on when you have the, the funding authorization, uh, sorry, this thing, the scope and budget approval, whoops. Scope and budget approval does not typically happen until after the vote. Okay. Yeah. That, you don't have to change the date unless the group feels they want to. I just wanted to make sure the, that those two things were okay to happen the same month. Yeah. Let's, let's leave it at 11 and keep the pressure on. So, okay. It's, I will say it is not an obstacle to the process. You kind of keep, once you have the local vote, you kind of keep going, you keep rolling. And then the MSBA, you sort of negotiate the details of the funding agreement, it gets executed. It, it, but the, it, the real moment where you're saying to them, this is what the project's going to cost is here. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like you end up start having these two processes going, like there's the process of doing the work, and then there's the process of the, the bank sort of going along in parallel. So so the number that would go in the local project funding authorization 
would come from the preferred schematic report approval. That's where that's where okay. that number gets settled. Okay. Okay. And again, it might be a little later than July. Um, I mean, I'm being pretty aggressive in the schedule. And once we have the designer on board, that the the only real point about this is that you can't you can't have the vote, your local vote, until you have identified a number and you have it in your ballot materials. And I think, you know, typically what we see is that that number has to go into the ballot materials by September. Paul, I think you and I talked about this a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd have to know by September what that number was and you would have to have submitted it to the MSBA because they actually ask for the ballot vote language as part of the submittal. So there's a little wiggle room there. It could be later than July, it could be August, but you really wouldn't wanna go later than August because then in September, you've gotta publish the, the ballot language and that you have to have told the MSBA what the ballot language was as part of the submittal, if that makes sense. Okay, so almost done. So this section um, is um, important because it lists what um, consultants you want the design team to bring to the table. And sometimes not all of the consultants are used, but you want to know who that individual is. So, um, they, the list that they give us has a couple of items in it that um, aren't terribly applicable to um, elementary schools. And Jonathan caught this when he was reviewing. Um, I think one of them was there was a theater consultant and there was a lab consultant. So we took those out. Um, but and the MSBA was fine with that because it's an elementary school. But then we added a historic preservation consultant. So what this means is that when we get these applications, there's like a page in the application that's like a big chart of all the people who are available to you to work on the project. Some of them have huge roles and some have minor roles. Um, we've added, asked that they provide a historic preservation consultant because the, these two buildings are actually on the cusp of being elig eligible for consideration for historic preservation. And it is possible, I know it, <laughs> Allison's laughing. I always, <laughs> always get a couple chuckles on this one. Um, <laughs> it's, it's possible, you know, given that Amherst is a, is a community that's very sensitive to your heritage, that someone might say, you know, we want to document these buildings before if one of them is going to be demolished. So this isn't necessarily going to happen, but it does mean that when we get the applications, each of the teams will have somebody on there who has the capacity to do that if it's needed. And does I that make sense? I think specifically they're subject to the Amherst historic, and I can't think of what the, the term is, but because, well, I just learned right now that Wild was over 50 years old. So mm -hmm. that automatically means that it has to be looked at by the historic commission. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I had a um, brief discussion with um, people who know how the historic commission works. And Steve, you know a lot of this too, but the, we have a potential change in demolition delay bylaw which would have an expedited early review on whether the building is historic, whether it has any issues that wouldn't have to go through the larger process. That would make this faster if that passes. Otherwise, it's the more formal. Um, so we will know that by October. Yeah. Um, which will be super helpful. So anyway, that person will be available to the team. And you know, it, it would be great to have to know in October because um, at that point when we have a designer selected and we are, um, I am on your behalf and with your assistance negotiating the designer contract, it would be good to be able to say at that point, yes, we need that person and the scope would be X or we don't need them. 
Can I make a comment? Um, sure. So these don't mean that these are 28 different people or 28 different firms. These could all be within one firm. They could all be, many of them could be with one person who might have multiple expertises. Yes. Uh, but this is a way of making sure that those muscles are flexed. So yeah. one that I had suggested to Margaret after our last meeting was a public art consultant. So, and I mentioned that in a perspective of having been once a public art consultant on a public project in a community that had 1% for art um, bylaw. So I don't know, Amherst is somewhat unique that the 1% the for art is not typically seen by the MSBA. So I don't know if that's something that we would wanna call out also. Steve, I just have a question. But Steve and I both worked on, on this bylaw and we have a public art commission and then the town manager is involved. And so to the, the intention would be very early on in the process when the designer is on board to try to figure out what kind of art where so it would be integrated. And I'm not sure we'd be asking the designer to have the public art person. So you're thinking that the designer should have one. So I'm just, you know, that's... Um, you know, yeah, so I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure. So it's not that it's not a huge project. It's not like an airport. So it's, but it is significant. It's, you know, potentially, I forgot what the number was, several well, hundred it, thousand dollars of art, right? So yeah, it's but you're right. But we also have an historic commission. We also have a town engineer, but still we want the architects to provide those consultants. So, so Steve, the, is the role of the consultant to help with the selection of the artist? What yeah. is there? What is the role? Yeah, but except the bylaw, I would think that most architects would feel comfortable in that role, right? So working mm -hmm. with the community too, but so maybe I'm overthinking this. So I, I will tell you that I think that what would happen, what I would recommend to you is that the, the OPM and the architect together working with you draft the RFP I, I don't think you need another person in this mix because what you really want is to have the architect be an active part of the selection as well as whoever is identified to be on the selection committee. And having done quite a few of these types of projects, I don't think you need an additional professional to help with this. However, I will say that what the architects are likely to do um, is to, because we noted in the objectives that this is a is a piece of the project. I think they are likely to comment on, usefully comment on their experience with public art in a way that will you know could, could potentially be a factor in the selection of the architect, you know, which is about you know their level of experience with collaboration. So um, I probably would not add the public art. I would recommend you not add the public art consultant because right. I don't think you're going to need it. And they okay. and basically what they would do is the architects would all say, oh, we're doing that. Yeah. They wouldn't bring I'm somebody good. else in to do it because that's additional fee. I'm good. Thank okay. you. Are there any other, you know, I think people should shout out because I'm going to be having my screen is small for hands up if there are any other questions. Um, I, I just just for management of the meeting, Kathy, many of us have a one o'clock hard stop just so okay. we can factor that in. Yeah. So the good news is, Paul, we're almost at the end here. Um, the only other thing is just to tell, say a little bit about the schedule is, so what will happen here is um, it, the, the MSBA actually puts the advertisement into the central register. Um, and then we will need to file it, list it with CONCOM and put it in the local paper. Um, it will appear on the 21st of July. Um, and then um, the applications are due, as is noted here, on uh, the August 18th, which is, you know, a decent chunk of time. Um, there is a site visit scheduled um, in the interim. Um, and then once these applications are in, they come to us, we share them with you, and then we have some work to do. We have to kind of construct a sort of big summary spreadsheet um, for the MSBA that sort of confirms that the, 
dot that the applications are correct that they've included someone for all of those lists of um, categories up above and we do some reference check and we do reference checking then about a week later the stuff goes to the msba and then the meeting at which the applications are reviewed is dated September 15th. So we do need to confirm on this committee. Um, and I think there'd been some back and forth about who would go to the September 15th designer selection meeting. We should have before the designer selection meeting at, at a meeting to look together at the applications or a subcommittee should meet to look together at the applications and then report back to the full committee. Um, and then the, the, so what happens on the 15th is the, the designer selection panel, which is about 12 people in partnership with three representatives from the community, uh, from this committee, uh, meet, review, and shortlist typically three applicants. And then those applicants will be reviewed, will be interviewed on October 5th. And it's all gonna be by Zoom, which is great for you all. You do not need to travel to Boston to participate. And, um, and actually anybody on the committee can join, obviously, which is also super helpful. But there will be three people who will be asked to you know, chime in, comment on and vote on the applicants on October 5th. So for the purposes of this application, the only thing that really matters is that, um, let me just take the highlight off this. The, they're going to be due on the 18th and shortly after the August 18th, shortly after that, I'll be distributing them to you. Now, there is a question about how many hard copies. The standard, the MSBA standard has been in the past 20 copies, but they've given us leeway. Um, they ask us to actually do it by addendum to reduce the number of hard copies. So in the previous iteration we sent to the MSBA, the MSBA get, MSBA get six hard copies and we had listed a total of 10 here. Um, so that would give you four, but I think I, I just need to know how many people need hard copies because we can certainly ask for 20, that's the standard. That's a hard copy. Huh? I said, what's a hard copy? What's yeah. a hard copy, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So where, where, where yeah. are existing copies going on the town so the, side? They'll all come to me. Yep. And then I will, we will immediately turn around and create probably a Dropbox to distribute them all digitally the day mm -hmm. they come in. I then we will turn around and mail the hard copies to the individuals who want hard copies. So on the, I guess, on the Mike, you were starting to say something on, on just, I, I don't know. I personally would not want a hard copy, but I don't know how many people would want a hard copy. My experience is, hands. <laughs> my experience okay. is a lot of these end up on a desk somewhere um, <laughs> and until they eventually get thrown out. Uh, so I, I think it's worth it to have a hard copy in the town hall and in the school's office just so people okay, can look so at get it. Two. Yeah, and I was going to suggest, um, since my, you know, I imagine myself and Ben, we talked about this at a public school committee meeting, would be the, the representatives. You know, I don't know how mm -hmm. you feel about Ben. I find um, it helpful. If I wasn't going to be on the in the meeting, I'd be fine doing it digitally. But um, since I am being in the meeting, it's sort of helpful because of the remote setting to have a hard copy in front. I don't know. I don't want to speak for you, Ben, but you know, as someone who is going to be part of that panel, I don't know how you thought of, think about it. Yeah, yeah. I Kind of agree too. So must that be two copies for the school? Yeah. So if it's two for the school, one for the town, would that be sufficient? But I think maybe you want two for the town, Paul, so that Anthony's got, you know, yeah. I don't know. So what... maybe maybe five and we put one at the library. Um, yeah, the Jones Library would be a good place yeah. because this is a public document in the public. Yes, you want to make it easy there. for people to get to. Yeah. Allison? We're going to get up to 20 pretty quickly. <laughs> Allison? When you say two for the school, do you mean one at Wildwood, one at Fort River, and then? Uh, what I was thinking is that Ben and I would utilize them for the um, interviews uh, and afterwards they certainly could be distributed. Um, you know, the, the primary purpose as I see it is that um, 
people who are evaluating them are able to see it in terms of the public access. I agree with Paul and, and yeah. others that having one at the library is a good idea, but if it's public information, we can do it digitally. You know, if I wasn't, this is just me personally, if I was going to be on the panel, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it would, it would, it would end up in a recycling bin somewhere and it's a lot of paper. So I'd feel not so good about that. And the only reason I'm asking for a hard copy is because, you know, I likely will be on the panel. And if I'm not, then I yeah. find someone else, then I'll give it to them. But I think otherwise, frankly, you know, my opinion is Margaret emailing it out to everybody um, who doesn't have to literally be defending their choices at a public meeting probably is sufficient. I, I, Mike, I think that's exactly right because the people who are participating are gonna want a stack of them sitting next to each other, next to themselves as this conversation is going on. So I definitely think we should get three for you. And then I'm hearing in addition- we, Should we just say 10 total? Yeah. So well, will, so will, six for the MSBA and then an, and then 10. So a total of 16? Yeah, or 15, whatever, yeah. Okay. Rupert, your hand Rupert was up. Has a stand up yeah. Oh, I was just, uh, I wanted to clarify that we're talking about stacks of documents, depending on how many people apply, yeah. not just yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. It, it, could, it could be a shelf full. <laughs> it's a pile. It's something that you could flatten flowers with for sure. Is it possible for us to review who the three from Amherst who will be um, joining the panel are? Because I don't remember that from yes. the last few. So I believe we talked about it being Mike, Ben, and Kathy, I think it would be you, but you may be out of the country. So the question was whether... I won't be physically in the country when this happens. Um, and it, it was a question, Paul was, I think as the executive of the town was the other person named. So, and I had asked Steve, but he said he's willing to do it. So I don't, you know, Paul and others. So I, you know, I figure, I, I mean, I can, I will be in Switzerland, but, um, you know, I can do it remotely, but the time difference would be pretty weird. Um, yeah, because they'll be they'll be meeting early in the morning, which would be afternoon your time. Yeah, so it's physically possible actually once it's Zoom. So, do we should we make that decision right now, or should we chat? Do do they need to know which three? They don't need to know right now. I I think you can have a further discussion about it. I think what we need to know is by the time these things come in on the eighteenth. We need to know whether it's a subcommittee review or a full committee review or a subcommittee review that then goes to a full committee review. What, what you want to come out with, the community wants to come out of, or the building committee wants to come out of for the purposes of the designer selection is the, a sort of a, a set of agreed upon points about what you think about these applications that can be used by the people who are then representing the committee. Um, so I would say it's probably at least, I, I'd probably suggest two meetings that the, you have a subcommittee that reviews a short list and then brings a, you know, sort of the talking points. Because what the thing the MSBA does not want here is they do not want you to decide who you want. They do, it's like, I, 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 I. what they want is for the committee to be bringing um, a thoughtful and informed opinion about the applications to the, the designer selection panel itself on the 15th. So I have a question. Um, what I could do after this meeting, because I know Paul, you said you've got a hard stop. Um, I could ask, we could, I think we could make this subcommittee as big as those who want to sit down and read through all, all of them. Yep. Um, um, so anyone who's interested, um, it could I could just send out a note? Would you like to be on the reader and be expect to have a huge amount of digital things to read on August eighteenth, nineteenth? You know, and so I could just get names, and so no one would be, no one who wanted to would be excluded. And I'll let Phoebe know that, um, and mm -hmm. Dwayne, and Dwayne, um, and Mike. Thanks I have here. a uh, okay. Oh, he is here. I'm not seeing. I just don't see him on my screen. So I have a question, Mike, on whether um, you're going to be, Diane has formally resigned from this committee. So are we going to have another person on by then or not? Yes. Okay. So 
I'll, when, I'll, I'll inform you when that's all settled okay. and, and we can get them on board. I know there's a town piece and the swearing in, but we'll. Okay, we'll so have. same thing. So I'll just make sure I that invite that anyone who wants to can be on it. Yeah, I think that's a good plan. Um, you know, Kathy, I, this is my opinion, which is just an opinion. I, I think if you're going to be out of the country, um, you may want to delegate someone else to be on this because I think it's really important that three people be present and you could even switch at the last minute, right? They, they, you know, we could say like, Oh, Kathy can do this, but I'd probably put forward three that we're not trying to do it from an international time space. That, that was my instinct. So, you know, just, I want to see whether we can get all the way through this document so we yeah. can take a vote on it. Um, and then to the extent people have to run, but there was, one, there's one other issue, isn't it on the insurance? Um, yeah, so there, I've taken it out, but um, they, there was a, they did, they do ask a standard question about whether you want additional insurance, which we've come in the in excess of the MSBA standard contract. And we've confirmed that we don't. So that was deleted, I think actually in the draft. And then this is a list of the attachments. You know, this is where I think we're really gonna be able to hit the ground running. These are all the documents um, that were created as part of the first project that do not have to be recreated here. And it's gonna give the designers who are looking at this a tremendous amount of valuable information. And you have all of that, Margaret. I have all of these but documents. It says these attachments, they're all here. Yeah, yeah. they're all here. Exactly. Can we go back to the insurance question so everybody's on the same sure. page on that? Because that was, just to be clear, what the standard language is, is for a $2 million um, professional liability insurance by the architects. Uh, Anthony checked with our insurance company and they said, we'd like to see $5 million of professional liability, which is a very large number. Um, I did review this with our town attorney who basically said, well, 2 million seems to be the standard. Um, most most architecture firms and the architects can confirm this usually have a one or $2 million limit. Um, if you want it more, they would likely go out and purchase more in liability insurance, which would just be an added cost. So the question was really up to us as to whether we felt like it was that urgent to add additional liability or not. Um, and my instinct was to keep it at the 2 million, but I wanted to make sure that everybody was on the same page with that. Well, and the other thing that is important to recognize is that if you increase the limits, you reduce the number of applicants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jonathan's nodding. <laughs> yeah. So you're, you're reducing the competitive quality by doing that, which is generally my issue. It's with rec with uh, doing that. And unless there's, we, I, we, I've actually never had anybody do this on an MSBA funded project, so. And we all know that insurance companies always ask for additional anyway to protect themselves. Exactly. Um, but I just wanna make sure that we're, we're clear that we're all in agreement that that's where we're gonna go. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So that's it for me. And I know we are, need to toggle to the update yeah. on the sixth grade. So, Can I ask so, one more question? I'm really sorry. I know that we have a no, lot no. of more time. Should we be recruiting? <laughs> there should we, and then maybe, Margaret, this is part of your job, but should, I mean, August 15th or August 18th is soon. So should we, so who's reaching out to designers to say, hey, this is coming up? So good question. Um, I certainly think um, that if anybody on this committee knows folks who are tracking these things that you, and you, you'd like to see apply, it's totally okay to call some up and say, hey, do you know this is coming out? Um, I mean, in general, I find that most of the folks who are familiar with the MSBA process are um, kind of very on top of this um, because they see, they saw the April board meeting and they know that everybody who was at the April board meeting is like now in the hopper. But I see Anthony has a question yeah, Anthony. or comment. Just a, a comment. The architects are definitely watching very early in the process. And in like, if you look at the plan holders list for the OPM procurement, there's a lot of architects on there. Oh, they, yeah. they weren't, they just want, 
they're aware of it and they're they're looking at it at the very early stages. So yeah, I, I would concur with that. While we don't do MSBA work, we do plenty of uh, other state and municipal work, and we keep our eye open for the OPM solicitations because it gives us a clue to what might be coming down the road in the way of a designer. Exactly. So I, I don't think that's a concern. But again, if there's someone who you think might not be in the loop, especially if they're not really plugged into the MSBA cycle, um, there is uh, prior to the advertisement, no issues with letting them know that it's in the in the hopper. Okay, so what, what I'd like to do, um, since this was required for the OPM, um, that we missed the step and then had to retroactively take a vote, I would like to make a motion that we approve this final draft and I will, um, as, as amended during the meeting, and Margaret will then clean it up. Um, do I have a second? So I'm making a motion second. to approve. Second. Second. And I need to do it as a roll call vote. So I'll just, yeah. again, go, I, I'm good. It's easier for me if I just do it on the screen. So Anthony? Aye. Uh, Kathy's a yes. Uh, Jonathan? Yes. Sean? Yes. Rupert? Yes. Ben? Yes. Mike? Yes. Margaret? Oh, you don't get to vote. I don't get to vote. <laughs> Steve, Steve? I'm not voting. Yes. Steve? Yes. Allison? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Dwayne? Yes. Okay, so and we're we're down two people, so we um, have eleven yeses. And um, we do see somebody's email on the screen. Just yeah, you're sharing know. your screen, Margaret. I don't know just if it's intended, it. but just see it. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. It's okay. Okay, thank you, everyone. So, Anthony, we will do make sure we get the minutes for this one done, so that we when we need to have formal certified minutes, which is what they needed to have last time. So I, th I think we've completed this part of the meeting. And then the next part was for Mike to do an update on the sixth grade decision. And the only other piece that um, if people have to leave early, Margaret had told me that once the designer, once the designer decision is made, that we're likely going to, we're going to be, need, be needing to meet weekly as a committee. So um, we don't need to do it now, but people should be thinking about the day of the week and the time of the day. And I can send out some kind of poll that we can get as many people to choose. We don't have to, um, I believe we were meeting Wednesday morning, particularly because of Diane's schedule, Mike. So right now, you know, if we still want an early morning time, um, but we, that will start with the clock with the designer. Um, on a weekly meeting. So we, we need to just peg a date, a day and a time. Um, so, and, and so I'm not gonna go over that now. I think it's easier to do that by email anyway. So people should be looking at their calendar and thinking about their lives as of the beginning of, as of October. So I will turn this over to you, Mike, on the seventh grade. Sixth grade. Sixth sure. grade. Uh, and I'll be quite brief because I know we have that topic plus public comments and um, I don't want to not have time because there are people in the public who are here. Yeah. Uh, but the, all this was presented in a public meeting uh, of the school committee. Ben is one of the two uh, school committee members who's been working on this. But let me see if I can share that. Is that visible to folks? Um, not, yep. yet, not yet on my screen, but... Maybe it's because of what I'm doing with the, the videos. I've, I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it. So you can just go, Mike. Okay. So just short story is where this is a document that was put together by uh, one of the school committee members and discussed in, in a public meeting. It's July. So we're talking about designer selection. The things in blue on this calendar that uh, Kathy emailed out to the committee are um, based on uh, this, this body. Um, but the idea is that in August, there'll be public forums on the conditions of the elementary schools. There's an ad hoc, which is Ben, me, and Carrie Spitzer group to draft surveys and presentations and plan listening sessions. Um, so we're starting to help uh, the community understand what the current situation is as it relates to space, particularly at Fort River and Wildwood. Um, and that people know as they're going to get their placement letters, their classroom may say cafeteria three or something very unusual for uh, 
a um, classroom space to be in or art room or things like that. And so we want to make sure that we've done this at school committee, but at a broader level that people are aware of the space needs at the schools and that they're not short term problems. You can see our first day of school is the 30th. Uh, apparently it looks like there's an Amherst school committee meeting the next day, which is fine. Um, and that's to agree to dates for listening sessions and provide feedback on format. Uh, getting to September, um, hold more listening sessions. Again, the August ones are more sharing information and gathering some level of feedback, but there's not a lot of feedback of other spaces we could use uh, for this coming school year. Uh, but we wanted to share that with the community so that when we hold the listening se sessions that are specific to sixth grade, people have that context. We think it's really important that people are uh, recognizing that the decision around sixth grade to the middle school or staying in elementary isn't purely an educational one. Some of it's an infrastructure and space related or actually significant portion of it is about infrastructure and space. Um, they're asking me to present uh, findings from those sessions on their meeting on September 21st. And uh, they're scheduled for a meeting on October 5th to potentially vote on moving the sixth grade to the middle school. Uh, I think it's worth noting, we included that um, tentative October 19th date uh, for that second designer selection panel uh, at MSBA. And the idea is that if this decision is made kind of concurrently more or less with the designer being on board, that's actually gonna really be helpful for the process moving um, at a good pace and for the designer um, having a sense of where the school committee and community are on this sixth grade question, because it's such a linchpin of where we go and what direction we head in. Uh, on a personal level, I've asked the school committee to maintain that schedule of a fall vote because we would want to use the bulk of the rest of that year to plan the specific programming. In other words, a December or January vote is probably too late on, on the educational side uh, for us to do the job that we would want to do with that. Um, so, um, you know, in terms of these first two engagements, the um, August engagement, the two green ones here, uh, and September engagement, you know, they did ask me and Ben to bring this back to this body um, so that, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to be today, but at some point we could have a conversation about how do those dovetail to the engagements that this group will start once the designer's on board and we start going into the community. And, you know, I think while they're two different bodies to the community, it may feel like one, in, one set of engagements on slightly different strands of a topic. Uh, we wouldn't think that way, but we want to, you know, be honest and transparent with the community that these things are interrelated. The decision about sixth grade does influence this project. So this is the draft schedule the school committee came up with. Uh, ben can certainly jump in. Uh, if there's things I'm missing, but we, you know, we wanted to share it and uh, let folks know this is where the school committee is. This is the timeline they have publicly committed to, um, which I think is really works really well for this body to receive that information well in advance uh, of doing the outreach with the designer on board. Sorry, that was a lot in a small amount of time, but I'm just conscious of, of time, particularly the public comment. Are there any questions, comments? I'm I, I've got my hand up, but the I can't see beyond um, the green October, oh, there we go. So the decision on sixth grade, so if the decision's not to move sixth grade, that's an Amherst School Committee alone decision, yes. But if the decision is to move sixth grade, that would be Amherst School Committee, the Regional School Committee and the union, whatever it is, union, I'm sorry, I don't know the number of the union. Is it three, That would that be three different votes or three? Different? Um. Yeah, I mean, what we talked about in public meeting is um, that the regional school committee has already said the door is open and they're very open to towns who want to participate. You're right to say that there would have to be some level of negotiation on, you know, potentially finances if you're sharing a nurse, for instance, or renting space. Um, but uh, the sense I got from the regional level uh, is that they don't see those things as barriers, that they're open to having sixth graders from member schools, it would have no bearing on Union 26, um, uh, which is the Amherst Pelham Elementary Supervisory Union, um, but it, it would involve a, a potential vote of the Regional School Committee. I think it is, you know, the Regional School Committee is composed of five members from Amherst, two from Pelham, one from Leverett, one from Shutesbury. It would be a majority vote, um, and there was no opposition to the exploration or um, of the idea, even if they're a member. Actually, a couple of the towns were explicit. My town won't do this and we're still open to it. And if one of the towns wants to do it, 
we think it, it'd be a good use of, uh, you know, they're very open, uh, even if their town doesn't participate to the idea and the concept. So I send strong collaboration between the members of the regional school committee on this. And Ben, if, if I'm remembering things with uh, rose colored glasses, you'll let me know, but I, I, that's the sense I got. Steve, did that answer the question? Yeah. Um, so, you know, one of the things I think we, it, once this decision is made, um, it clearly affects the study design so that we have to, at some way, be alerting MSBA as well. We've got these two possible uh, grade, grades and student composition, number of students. So um, any other, I, I've got my screen open so I can see your hand like this or the little button. Any other questions or comments now before I turn it over to open it up to the public for comments or questions? I'm not seeing any. Um, yes, ready to go. <laughs> okay, and, and as I said, um, the next piece coming out of here will be, um, to all of you to see who wants to be on the subcommittee. So on, uh, let me just get back to the screen. So I, we are now open for public comments and um, I see two people have raised their hands. So um, actually I don't, when I uh, allow to talk. So Bruce, I'm gonna call on you first. Your hand is up first. So I'm going to, I think allowing you to talk brings you into the meeting. Okay, you need to unmute, Bruce. You are here. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, I want to speak to the uh, need for a daylighting consultant. Um, uh, I had come to the town hall uh, last meeting uh, in order to do this, uh, but had to leave. I've been at every one of these meetings since the beginning except for the half hour that I wasn't at that, and that turns out to be the critical half hour, unfortunately, it seems. Um, uh, Margaret, I should introduce myself. I'm an architect. I have a practice in town, or I did. I resigned, I retired five, six years ago. I had uh, a lot of experience in high performance building, zero net energy buildings that we produced. Some of the first I have uh, created through my office, the fifth uh, living building that was created in the, well, on the planet, really. So uh, this is something that I had a lot of experience in. And, and for many years, I was a daylighting consultant that I ran in conjunction with my firm. Um, but what I've noticed uh, in talking with uh, uh, people at Landman Partners and other daylighting uh, firms is that in recent years, it's become possible to do um, uh, electronic simulations of, of daylighting. It, uh, time was mm -hmm. uh, that you would have to make a physical daylighting model if you wanted to get an accurate rendition of quality of light, mm -hmm. not so much quantity, but quality. And in fact, uh, I think Michael was the only person on the committee who was in the last round. And um, that if you were part of the last round, you would know that I was deeply involved in trying to affect a high quality of daylighting in the classrooms emphatically in the classrooms. So much so that I made a physical daylighting model at a fairly large scale and invited the committee out into the parking lot as well as the architects. And it was very well received. It was very positive. And I think the architects would have uh, um, taken advantage of what I was offering had that project moved forward. Um, but what I know now is that the increasing computer capacity um, allows us to do high quality uh, modeling without the need of making uh, physical simulations. But in order to get that capability, it resides in daylighting consultants. Architects firms don't have either the capability uh, or the experience to uh, really uh, use these at the level that I think we need. And if uh, I'm successful in persuading you all to uh, require the highest level of the CHIPS uh, daylighting standard, which would put, I think, somewhere around 70% of all classrooms with uh, a, a, an acceptable standard of daylighting. It's kind of elaborate, but a high standard of daylighting is described in the CHIPS standard. But I think it needs the, um, the capability that 
a daylighting consultant nowadays has and can bring. And I think without that capability, um, we're not going to achieve that uh, objective. So I think, uh, and Margaret, you're right, I did giggle when I saw that there was a historic consultant listed, but uh, not a daylighting consultant. Um, I uh, would wonder, um, Kathy, whether it's possible, I know you voted on this, uh, but the, the vote did say uh, as amended during the meeting. Um, am I uh, sufficiently persuasive to cause you all to feel that the uh, presence of a daylighting consultant is critically necessary if we're gonna achieve the goal that was written further up that we wanted to get good daylighting, especially in classrooms? Um, we you know, we wouldn't normally do a response to comments and during public comment, but I think it's important to at least hear back on this, Margaret, from Margaret yeah. or from Jonathan, in terms of what architects would typically have, whether we could request that they would bring someone on or we could make this a core part of the interview. So, um, first of all, Bruce, I, I want to just say um, you you clearly impacted the process so far because when the committee was drafting the objectives, um, they were said multiple committee members were really clear to me with me that the um, it was really important that a core um, requirement for the project, a core objective was daylight design. Um, and in fact, I'm just gonna pull up um, the objectives because it's it's embedded in them and what I and and Kathy also raised to me and she referenced your participation in previous project in the previous project and how important that and useful that conversation had been that this seemed like kind of it seemed like something that was important to everybody but you had spearheaded it what I suggested to her is that um, we we have the ability as part of the um, interview process to um, provide questions that the designers should address in the interview. And I suggested to her that that um, was, would perhaps be the best way to really get a focus on this because, um, and I, Jonathan's going to start nodding about this in a minute too. So the, the applications, when you get them, there's, there's a lot of boilerplate and there, there's, you know, there's such, to some degree, people are kind of reciting stuff. Um, you know, to me, the issue is so important here that I think you really want to have the designers reflecting it as part of the interview. I'm more interested to hear what they would say in an interview to know than what they'd say in an application. That being said, I, I don't have an objection to adding a daylighting consultant. I just want you to be aware, you know, relative to the, so the, there were the other, the two issues that came up were historic preservation, which I think we do need to add, public art, which I, hopefully you heard my back and forth with Steve about it. I did. Now the daylighting, if we list it, it doesn't mean that they have to have an independent consultant they can choose in responding to bring someone to say, we have a member of our team who is gonna provide that expertise. So I just wanna make sure that you understand that if we add it, that it isn't necessarily gonna be an independent consultant. I do. Okay, I think um, I wanna end this just, we've got one other hand up and um, so is that okay, Bruce? I'm gonna- Yes, I will send you Kathy a, uh... Uh, a two paragraph or maybe th three short, but a, a short argument for it, which um, could either, it could be used as the basis for um, inquiry as to how the teams would respond to that objective that is listed previously, which is the, especially in classrooms phrase, how they intend to respond to that. So thank you very much, we're Margaret. Gonna... Thank okay, you. We're gonna... uh, Okay, um, the other person we have is Tony Cunningham. Tony, I think I brought you in and you can unmute. Yes, thank you. Um, Tony Cunningham in North Amherst. And my questions are around the timeline and the timing of some important pieces. 
Assuming the sixth school committee votes in October to move the sixth grade to the middle school, when does the education plan need to be written? And has the district begun work on that yet? And how will the public be involved in the educational plan? I believe the educational plan will define what spaces will be needed in the building. So I imagine decisions will need to be made around what specialized programming would be located at the school, what spaces that programming would need, it, what if any preschool would be loco located there, what spaces the dual language program may need, what spaces STEM or project-based learning will need, et cetera. And secondly, uh, what body would discuss whether this school should be designed to have a climate resiliency hub and when would that need to be decided? And then lastly, if the town is consolidated into two schools, when would redistricting need to be completed, knowing where the district lines would be drawn? Thank you. Thank you. We, I, we've written down the questions and we will, those will be definitely topics. Thank you, Tony that we will need to discuss. I don't think we have concrete answers right now. I know there is some work um, that's going to be started right away to look at the earlier education plan and what needs to be changed. But that is, those are clearly all three parts that we will need to address. Thank you. And I think that is it for, I don't see another hand up. So are there any other issues or comments that people want to make? I think what we've said to you is that I will get back with a request of how many of you would like to be on a review committee um, for the proposals. And then something about the day of the week and the time of the day um, with lots of choices to see when we, if we're starting to meet weekly in October and we will figure out whether there is one more meeting that we need to have just to review. Margaret is starting to put together the timeline for different kinds of meetings. So I think one more meeting of this group in the summer that's not related directly to designer, but our own timeline. So people have an understanding of what we need to do when would be useful to have. So I'm committed to get that, get, getting that back to you um, that's not directly designer related. Okay. Anything else? Um, and it looks like Paul, I know some people said they had a hard stop. And so your hard stop, Paul, if we can, it's well, just it, it's after Anthony, one. Anthony, Sean, and I. So we all have yeah, to go. So it's just after one. So Good. if there's nothing else, I think we can adjourn the meeting. And I thank everyone for meeting with us. And Margaret, I'll be back. We can get back in touch just to yep. make sure we've got the pieces together. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.